Go before the Word of God, book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Hallelujah. Sister Terry, at your son's church, they had a ladies' conference this weekend. How'd that go? It was killing me. It was dirty, man. <laughs> That's wonderful. I heard it went great. That's why I was asking. So that is wonderful. Hallelujah. That's up in College Park, Georgia. If you know somebody up in the South Atlanta area, let, them, let Sister Terry know. We can get your, myself, we can get you going to her son's church up there. He's got a great church. Solid rock. Pentecostal church. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says how God, this is Peter preaching to Gentiles. At this time, believe it or not, the earth had been in existence for over 4,000 years and Gentiles still did not have the Holy Ghost yet. The Jews had just had it a few weeks. The Samaritans a few weeks. But the Gentiles still didn't have the Holy Ghost. And so he's preaching to a bunch of Gentiles. Isn't it good to preach to a bunch of people that need the Holy Ghost? Brother Watts texted me a couple days ago. He said, I just baptized 35 more in Jesus' name. He's preaching in those uh, jails. And so he's kind of got a captive audience right there. Hallelujah. But they need the Lord. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Peter preaching, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And so when he begins to tell the Gentiles, he begins to describe to them Jesus, who went about doing good, and healing all. And if you don't mind, let's everybody say all. all. All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we know God was in him. He said, the Father is in me. He doeth the work. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus' body. We're complete in him. So he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Here today, I just want to talk to us for a little while on Christ the healer. Christ the healer. Why don't you join hands with the person next to you. Put your hand on their shoulder. Whatever is appropriate. Ask God to bless them really good. We want to see God do mighty healing here today. God, I glorify you. I love you. Do massive amounts of healing, God, today. In Jesus' mighty name, I submit to the word of God. Hallelujah. Let your word have free course. Do mighty healings today, God. You want your kingdom to come, Lord Jesus. This is how you show of the proofs of your kingdom is that healing is in the house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You didn't send forth your people powerless, but you sent us forth, God, with healing in your wings. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we ask it. Hallelujah. Let's everybody say amen and glorify the Lord once again. He's good. Thank you, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, Christ is a healer, and you can be seen. Christ is a healer. I'm so glad, and you can be seated. I am so glad that the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what I read about in the Bible means God's still doing the same thing today. He walked about in his body, in his flesh. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says the church is his body. And so he works through his church. So the wonderful miracles we read recorded in the Word of God are still happening today. And I am so thankful for that. You and I live in a very hurting world. We could quote statistic after statistic. But the world is hurting. As a matter of fact, I heard a pastor say one time, if you would just preach to hurting people. Now we know we have to preach as the oracles of the Holy Ghost. But he said if you would just preach to hurting people, you could not build a church big enough. The statistics are staggering about the amount of hurt and pain that are going on. People are literally crippled from hurts and pains in uh, the world. Cancer has increased dramatically where it's said now that somewhere around one in three people before they die will develop cancer, many times multiple forms of cancer. Autism is exploding around us. Just tragedies we're hearing about. Uh, homes burning, people dying in car wrecks, all kinds of things. We just read about a person that uh, the Terminex sprayed bug spray at their house and it hurt the little boy. He was uh, almost uh, killed. He's lost his motor skills and all kinds of things because 
Terminix came and sprayed bug spray at his house. We read another report that a family that finally was able to go on vacation in the Caribbean and they had used a bug spray in that hotel room that is illegal in the United States, but it is legal in much of the world. And the family all died from that. So we live in a time of tragedy, a time of, uh, of hurting people, a time of uncertainty. The Bible recorded there would come this time of uncertainty and referred to it as the beginning of sorrows. Now look, I have no clue when Jesus is coming. I'll be the first to tell you. It could be 100 years. It could be 500 years. It could be five days. It could be five minutes. I don't have a clue when Jesus is coming. All I know is, is I want to be ready when he comes. And I know he's about 2,000 years closer than he was when the Bible was written. Hallelujah. And it says that when you see certain things come to pass, know that it's near even at the door. I do know Israel's never been a country for about 1,900 years till this generation. Hallelujah. And the generation directly preceding it. So we are living in a time of dramatic fulfillments and dramatic things happening and mass migrations and, and uh, pandemics and this type of things. Uh, people are having to take an unprecedented amount of mental health drugs. And uh, again, those statistics are staggering. Only about the people from five years of age and up that are on some sort of mental health drug. Now people might ask, how did sickness enter the world? The Bible gives the answer in Romans the 5th chapter, verse number 12. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12 says, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, let's everybody say death by sin, death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So sickness is the precursor to death. So if death came through sin, sickness came through sin. You get sick, sin comes, then sickness, then death. Sickness would be the intermediary between sin and death. So obviously it was not the will of God for sickness to be in the world. There at the Garden of Eden, it was perfect, it was wonderful, it was tremendous, everything was fine. There was no sickness, there was no hurting, there was no heartache, there was no pain, there was no grief, there was none of those things in the Garden of Eden. It was what one would call paradise. It was tremendous. As a matter of fact, there was only one temptation in the garden, and that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there was one tempter in the garden, and that was Satan. And so that one temptation and one tempter entered leprosy, leukemia, cancer, wars, abortion, Everything horrible we see in the world is because of that which happened in the Garden of Eden. Notice how God weighted everything. People say, why did God have to do it that way? Because God didn't want anybody worshiping Him except out of their own free will. And so He weighted everything towards grace, love, mercy, and paradise and just had one tempter and one tree of temptation. And He had even told the man... Don't eat of that tree and everything will be fine. So God did everything within His power to prevent sickness and death and hell expanding itself. He did everything possible because He wanted free moral agents to worship Him. But mankind still sinned and sin entered the world. And since sin entered the world, sickness entered the world. God's original intent was health. And if you live for God, it does not matter how sick you are today. If you live for God, there's going to be a day where you are eternally healed. Sometimes when we pray for somebody and they pass away, we might get frustrated. But really, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And His ways are not our ways. They may have been eternally healed at that moment. We had a dear sister, one of the greatest prayer warriors you could ever meet. Sister Martina Enamorado Bakker. And uh, she is from the country of Honduras. And uh, she's been to this church. She was in our church in Albany, in, uh, excuse me, McDonough, Georgia. And uh, she got stomach cancer. And she fought it and fought it and fought it. Her husband fought it and fought it and fought it. 
And a few days ago, her husband finally said, Now, Lord, if you want to take my wife, I give her to you. I want her to stay here with me and our daughter. But if you need to take her, do that. And she went on to be with the Lord. As a matter of fact, the funeral was this morning at 10 a.m. And uh, up in the Atlanta, Georgia area. You see, Sister Martina is not hurting any longer. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So Sister Martina is in the presence of the Lord right now. And she will never be sick again. She'll never hurt again. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more heartache. There'll be no more pain. Hallelujah. So God is the ultimate healer. Can you say amen? And he's done the ultimate work of healing. If you live for Jesus, you're going to be healed one day. But God is so miraculous and so awesome. He doesn't just heal over there. He heals in the here and now. Hallelujah. I believe in the Holy Ghost. God is setting the stage for an incredible anointing of healing in this end time hour. I believe we will see unprecedented healings, unprecedented miracles. Hallelujah. I believe that we will see things that will blow our minds. Hallelujah. I have seen the dead race. I have seen that with my two eyes. I have felt it in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I believe God's going to manifest that. People getting out of wheelchairs. Amazing things happening. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is so good. And He's going to show the devil in this end time hour. Hallelujah. That He's still on the throne. God is still on the throne. He's still greater than the devil. He's still greater than the enemy. Hallelujah. Even in the book of Revelation, you've got these two witnesses walking around doing all kinds of miracles. I'm telling you, God is still on the throne. God is still a miracle worker today. There's still healing in His wings. Hallelujah. Wherever Jesus is, there's miracles. There's signs. There's wonders. Hallelujah. This isn't the dead, gold, dry church. This is one of those Pentecostal churches. This is the church that death will warn you about. Hallelujah. Where we see the Holy Ghost apostolic fire fall. The power of God. People get cast out of devils. Hallelujah. The devils get cast out of those folks. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost. And the word of God. Hallelujah. There is no greater power on earth than the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is wanting to manifest himself, show himself strong. Hallelujah. I'm not saying God will do this, but God could do this. God could raise up everybody at Phoebe Memorial. He could raise up everybody at Phoebe North. He could raise up everybody at every hospital in southwest Georgia, and he wouldn't even be tired. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about in the name of Jesus. I'm not preaching a defeated gospel. I believe we're the church triumphant. I believe we're bought with the price of the blood of Jesus. I believe we've got God in us and we're more than conquerors to everything. To him that loved us. Hallelujah. Why don't we just glorify Jesus a little bit? Hallelujah. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. People say, well, God doesn't heal every time. He may not, but He heals a lot of the time. Hallelujah. And I'm going to leave those decisions to God. But I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to fast. I'm still going to lay hands on the sick. And I'm still going to expect them to recover. It does more than anything to see the power of God manifested in an hour, in, in an area. Hallelujah. In the day and hour that we live in. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. Third John, verse number two. John, this is a wonderful apostle, is writing to a gentleman we don't know much about, the well beloved Gaius. And he says, I love you in the truth. So obviously he, he was in the truth, Gaius was. And he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. This apostle knew it was the will of God for him to prosper and be in health, even as his soul prospered. 
Hallelujah. Again, sickness may come on you, and that's between God and, and His wonders to perform. But I do know God is still a healer. Hallelujah. In Psalm 105, the 105th Psalm, verse number 37. Psalm 105, verse number 37. We read about something that God did for the nation of Israel. 105, verse 37. It says, He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there, this was the exodus, the largest jailbreak in history, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Now notice this, there were 600,000 plus men above 20 years of age. And uh, many of those men had been killed by Pharaoh, or certain numbers of men above 20 had been killed by Pharaoh earlier. And so, uh, because of Pharaoh's decrees and all of this, so you have 600,000 men and so you'd think you'd have at least eight, maybe eight, nine hundred thousand, maybe more ladies. And so now you're looking at 1.6 million either side. And then you've got children. And they, what we learned, that they had enormous amounts of children and, uh, in that time period. Enormous. Because once you get into the wilderness, we see each family averaging 28 plus children, if you do the math. And uh, it's an amazing amount. So you're talking a minute, a minute of two, three people, two, excuse me, two or three million people coming out of Egypt. It could have been five, six million or more than that. But let's say two or three million people. Now, I used to live near the city of Atlanta. It's got 5.7 million people in it. And so let's say you take half of the city of Atlanta and the, the surrounding area. Man, there would be hundreds of thousands of people in nursing homes home health care, everything, hospitals, and the people sick and everything, uh, hundreds of thousands of people. Even in this area, in all of southwest Georgia, there's about 600,000 people in southwest Georgia. So we're talking about a, a group that is four or five times the size of everybody in southwest Georgia. Think of everybody in the hospital. Think of everybody in every nursing home. It's, it's amazing, the numbers. But yet, God healed them all. Some people say they were healed at the Passover. But we know this for a fact that there was not one feeble one among them. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 5, we read this about the people of God in this Old Testament dispensation. This Old Testament era. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 5 says, And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. So there was not one feeble person, and their clothes didn't wear out. Well, then we get to the New Testament, and we go to the book of Hebrews, that the theme of the book of Hebrews is the word better. And it's talking about the New Covenant. And it says this in Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6. So remember, in the Old Testament... It says under the old covenant, the old law, not one feeble one among them. Yeah. Their clothes didn't wear out. Listen to what it says we've got in Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Friend, that old covenant had a lot. I mean, it could heal everybody out of 2.8 million people. It could make the clothes on their back and the shoes on their feet not wear out. That's under the old covenant. You and I, we're living in a new covenant established upon better promises. Hallelujah. If God could heal all them, God could heal you as well because we've got a better sacrifice and His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything He did, He did for us. Mark 16, 18 says, He signed shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 1 Corinthians 12, 9 says, The gifts of healing are in the church. We turn back to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. Um, Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse number 3. 
It says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. In Exodus 15, 26, this old covenant, it was said in Exodus chapter 15, verse number 26, as they were making their way out of Egypt, Exodus 15, 26, it says, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is Jehovah Rapha. The Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. Now I think that this God, the Jehovah Rapha of the New Testament, is fulfilled in Jesus in the New Testament. I believe when the Bible says that by his stripes we were healed, that that same sacrifice at Calvary that purchased redemption for us, before you got to Calvary, you had stripes going on that sinless back for our healing. He was not striped in vain. Hallelujah. If you look at a piece of unleavened bread to this day, it is pierced and it is striped. It is pierced. You can go to Harvey's and, and buy a piece of, of unleavened bread and it is pierced and it is striped. Man, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. You get to the backside of Calvary, and that's where healing is. On the front side of Calvary is redemption. Hallelujah. It's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you get to the backside of Calvary, he was wounded for your transgressions, and by his stripes, ye were healed. I'm thankful that Jesus went through the terrible things on the cross for you and I and the passion before the cross so you and I can be healed here today. God not only wants you saved, God can heal your sick body as well. I'm talking about a God who can save, deliver, and heal. His power is not slack. And you don't have to let the devil mess with you either. Friend, you've got dominion over the devil. If there's a ghost or whatever, I don't believe in ghosts. But people have been telling about ghosts and houses and all this kind of stuff. Look, that's nothing else but a demon. You can drive that thing out in the name of Jesus. It doesn't have to torment you any longer. Hallelujah. Take dominion over the place where you're at in the name of Jesus. And let the power of the Holy Ghost manifest itself. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Let's glorify Jesus. God can take over every devil. Hallelujah. He can bind every devil out of your life. No weapon for me against you shall prosper. That wicked one, 1 John 5, 18, touches you not. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10, verse number 9. We have other 70, not even one of the 12. But he sent out other 70, and he said this. He said, and heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Notice healing the sick and evangelism are intricately tied together. And uh, I have seen that over and over, that when God heals somebody that's sick, so often, not every time, so often they want to serve Him. And sometimes they'll even bring their family members in as well. John 14, 12 says this about the New Testament church. You and I. This is talking about us as believers. Can you say amen? amen. John 14, 12. It says this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. The works that Jesus does, shall you do also. And greater works than these, brother Dan, shall you do, because I go into my Father. Hallelujah. That was Jesus. That was the name of Jesus. Healed that guy at your work. And he's talking to Jim, saying, Jim, I'm Christ the healer. Hallelujah. Because it makes sense if God can heal your sick body and God can deliver you from any type of thing, 
then God can heal your sin sick soul as well. If He can heal your headache, man, He can sure save your soul. Fill you with the power of the Holy Ghost. So greater works than this shall you do. Because I go unto my Father. Now, greater works than Jesus. I just wanted to share just one scripture about some of the works that Jesus did. And greater works than this shall you do. Matthew 15, beginning at verse number 30. It says, And great multitudes came unto him, Jesus, having with them those that were lame. Means they couldn't walk, had a cane or something. Uh, them that were blind, they couldn't see. Them that were dumb, they couldn't speak. And maimed. Now, maimed usually means they were missing some body part. Okay. It's different than lame. Maimed means a permanent disfigurement. Maimed. And many others then cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Yes. Look at this. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw people who had never spoken, they didn't even have to go to language class. Uh. Oh, the dumb to speak. Mm -hmm. Look, if God can do that, He can certainly get you to speak in tongues. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. The dumb to speak. But look at this. The main, let's everybody say the main, the main. to be whole. Yes. Whole. <laughs> Somebody chopped their finger off. They come to Jesus. Pow! A finger kick. Amen. Somebody's missing a leg. They come to Jesus. Pow! Right. A leg. Yeah. Now, I'm going to just tell you, I have never seen that. Oh. That does not mean God can't do it. Because right. oh. God is a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I believe God. Yeah. I believe God. More than I believe anything else in this world, I believe God. God. Hallelujah. And God is still a healer and He's still working in people's lives today. Can you say amen? And He made the lame to walk and the blind to see and they glorified the God of Israel. Now notice, remember, He said greater works than this shall you do. People say, why is there sickness in the church? Well, sometimes it's just something they go through, like the book of Job. It's just something that happens. The book of Job happened. Job didn't understand. Job didn't cause it. It just happened. There's other times sickness comes in the body of Christ because of the chastening of the Lord. That does not mean that every sickness is due to sin. It was due to Adam's original sin, but not necessarily your personal sin. But sometimes it is. In 1 Corinthians 11.30, the Corinthians were not respecting God communion. And Paul said, for this reason, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So we do know there are certain times that God, through the chastening of the Lord, just allows that to happen in a believer's life. And it is through love, because it is through that sickness, just as our parents' chastening, if it is done properly, leads us to righteousness. So God, our Heavenly Father's chastening, leads us to Himself. We go to James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. We're moving quickly through this. It says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Now notice this, any sick among you, this is an epistle, it's written to church people. Let him call for the elders of the church. So anointing of oil is many times for the church, even though in Jesus' ministry we saw it for everyone. And so the anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise up a church person. So a church person can be sick. Notice this. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Because there's been sins possibly that cause some of those sicknesses, not all of those sicknesses that happen. So tremendous things happen at the James 5 anointing of oil. It happens not only for healing, but sins are forgiven as well. And uh, Revelation 3.16, Jesus said, if you're not hot or, you know, if you're, you're lukewarm, that he will spew you out of his mouth. So sometimes it is the spewing process. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2.25, by, by his stripes we were healed. Matthew 8.17 says this, Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, about the wonderful mercies and love of God. 
Matthew 8, 17. It says this. It says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah or Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Jesus said just a little bit later on in Matthew eleven twenty eight, He said, Come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Church, I'm here to tell you, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, God is still a healer. Yes, he, is. he is still a miracle yes, worker. You say, I've been prayed for before for something, but you never know when that prayer is going to come forth, and that's going to be the time that your healing comes forth. That's the reason I just won't pray. Whenever I've got an issue in my body, I'm like, pray for me. It is not a lack of faith. It's like I liken it to chopping down a tree. I used to be a... Like, I used to love to get an axe and just go in the woods and chop down trees. Now, I know the tree acres don't like that anymore. Hallelujah. They, and all of this. But it was just, I did it. I was just raised that way. And I loved it. And just go. And friend, because there's a, there's a saying out there that says, if you do the same thing and expect a different result, that's the definition of insanity. That's not true. Because there have been many times that I've chopped at a tree for days. And I kept chopping at that tree. And then all of a sudden, one time I hit that tree and I hear, if you've ever heard it, the tree makes a groaning noise. It's, it's leaning. And you know, it's coming. You just keep hitting that tree. And then the tree eventually falls. It's like that old saying. People say, well, I shouldn't even say, I was going to make a joke. So I probably should go ahead and finish the joke. That if a tree falls in the woods and, and there's nobody around to hear it, it, is a man still wrong? No, that was just a joke. Hallelujah. But no, and so the tree falls. Y'all can think about that later over a lecture or something. The tree falls, even though you've been doing the same thing over and over and over. One of those strokes, that tree falls. Hallelujah. It's like in hand-to-hand -hand combat when they used to have so much war was hand-to-hand -hand combat. You did the same thing over and over and over. Eventually, you got the victory over your enemy. It does not show a lack of faith. Never get discouraged about God. God loves you. He cares for you. God wants to do great things for you. If you go through a little bit of sickness, hey, first of all, check your life. Make sure you're not living in sin. Make sure you're not living halfway for God. Make sure you're totally yielded unto Jesus Christ. And then when you, if you realize you're totally yielded to God, we sing that song. You'll understand it better. Pie and pie. Hallelujah. But you just keep on. Though He slayed me, yet will I serve Him. You get that faith of Almighty God on the inside of you. You realize His love and His goodness. Hallelujah. And you say, if I stay like Paul did, which is far more needful, or if I go, which is far better. Hallelujah. I'm a winner either way. I'm a winner either way. Hallelujah. But you start praising God and say, God, I could do your work so much better if I felt better. God, there's so much that I could do for you. Church, I'm going to tell you, we serve an unlimited God. A limitless God. I don't care what it is. I don't care if people need money. And I'm not talking about being lazy and sitting around wanting money to come. But man, if you're working and you're trying your best and you just uh, and you need money, you get on your knees and ask God. You dedicate His tithes, His offerings to Him. I'll guarantee you, you will be blessed. I don't care how much money you need. I don't care how much deliverance you need. God is able to heal. God is able to deliver. There are no limits with God. Hallelujah. My brother started something in the 70s. If you go to his Wikipedia page, it talks a little bit about it. It was called the Atlanta Comics and Fantasy Fair. And so my brother was about 11 years older than me. He, he began this and... Uh, and, and it was, as it says, science and 
fiction, you know, fantasy fair. And so it was all about Star Wars and all of this type of thing. And he would have uh, the founder, the considered the founder of, of modern special effects, a man by the name of Ray Harryhausen. They would come and show, uh, you know, how he did the special effects and all this. Then George Lucas comes along. George Lucas would come to these as well and uh, show all of this. I remember when I was young, Sister Walter, I went to Universal Studios with mom and dad. I think my first cousin Mark was with me. I can't even remember. But went to Universal Studios and they showed us the Dead Sea, excuse me, the Red Sea crossing of Moses in the Ten Commandments. Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments. And I'm just going to tell you, it's so disappointing. You're riding around in a little golf cart with a few seats hooked to the back of the golf cart. And when you drive through what's go, what the, the Red Sea crossing, it's just a little thing of water, about like this. And you drive through it, and you're like, this is nothing. This is absolutely nothing. Why? Because special effects in Hollywood is smoke and mirrors. Hollywood is just, it's all smoke and mirrors. When you unfortunately waste your time, God has given you a certain amount of time. And if you waste it some time, watching some outer space movie and and lightsabers and people flying through outer space and special effects and terminators and all of this kind of stuff just know it's all nothing it's not real it, it doesn't exist it's some dude on a computer making animation to trick your mind to where it'll look a certain way it doesn't exist. But when you come to Jesus, it is not about smoke and mirrors. It is not about animation. It is not about any of those things. It's not about special effects. It is about the power of the Holy Ghost. That the God of glory can do anything in your life. It doesn't matter what you have need of. God can heal you. God can do the miracle. God can do awesome things. You have got to see the power of God in your life. In church, we're living in a day and an age where we have got to see the power of the Holy Ghost move. It can't just that I believe in fellowship and the Bible says about fellowship. But it's not just about church dinners. And it's not just about fellowship. And it's not just about getting together. We have got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. In our midst. We have got to whatever it takes to have the power of the Holy Ghost. We have got to do it. God wants to see His truth move throughout the whole earth. Hallelujah. And it's not going to be done by earthly means. There's, I'm not against organization. We need organization. I understand all of that. that. You know, it takes some of both in a certain way. But in a certain sense, it's all about because you can organize and still everybody goes to hell. Hallelujah. But if you got Jesus, if you got Jesus, if it's noise to brawls, then Jesus is in the house. Everything is all right. Hallelujah. And Jesus is in this house. I know it because He said where two or three are gathered in His name, there am I in the midst, in the middle. Jesus is in the middle of this house. Hallelujah. And he is limitless. He can heal. He can deliver. He can set free. I believe He sent His Word and healed me. I believe people that are sick outside these four walls, when you pray inside these four walls, that God can send forth His healing outside these four walls. Don't ever doubt. Have faith in God. Have 100% faith in God. When I pray for somebody, and I thank God, I don't ever want to lose this. Uh, because I'm not positive how I got it, other than the fact that Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But uh, when I pray for somebody, I don't like a lot of people have to know. Like you're praying for Brother Dan, and they want Dan to say, "Well, I've got this sickness. I've got this," and that way we can pray specifically. I understand all that. 
I'm going to tell you, God's big enough. I don't even have to know what's wrong That's with right. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can pray and say, God, in the name of Jesus. And you can pray yeah. and say, God, because he signs your father in the blue. God, in the name of Jesus, yeah. whatever Dan yes. has need of, yeah. do this miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God will get all the glory. Yeah. See, God is trying to get people out of the equation to an extent so people won't get any glory that it will be God getting all the glory. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's Brother Robert who lays hands on Sister Mary Jane or Sister Kate or Sister Cody. I don't care who it is. I just want them to get healed. I just want them to get what they need in the Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't, I don't have to be the one that lays hands on them. We're all the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So ever, and these signs shall follow them that believe. It says in the church are gifts, plural, of healing. Gifts. That lets me know that there's gifts of laying on of hands, the elders anointing with oil, that there's believers laying on of hands. Uh, that, that probably means there's just people that know uh, certain things, like we would call doctors. There's gifts. Because all, because Satan wants you sick. Yeah. Hallelujah. He comes to steal your health, kill you, and destroy. The devil wants you sick. Hallelujah. So the gifts of healing are in the church. And so if somebody's in the back, you know, praying for somebody and they get healed, I don't have to be there. You know, I'm the pastor. I'm the worker. I try to keep bad things out and good things in. Hallelujah. That's the pastor. But I don't have to just, oh, the, I, the pastor had to be the one. Uh-uh. Doesn't have to be Brother Lord. Doesn't have to be Brother Smith. Doesn't have to be Brother Smith. Yes. And it had to be Brother Steve Burke. It, it can be you. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Yes, right. And don't ever let it go to your head because you just know it wasn't you. It was Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you go in your own name, there's not going to be any healing to take place. Hallelujah. You had to say the name of Jesus and it was the Spirit of God and it was the grace of God and it was the mercies of God. It's like Jerry Jones says. He says there's no limits to what God can do if He gets all the glory. Amen. 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 If He gets all the glory. So Christ the healer. God is still a healer. I believe in the Holy Ghost. We've seen wonderful miracles at this church. But I believe God's going to do some tremendous things. More in a greater measure. I hope we remember when it happened. Yeah. Hallelujah. And to give glory to Jesus Christ. Because God is an awesome God. I really believe. And when I say we're in the end time hour, don't get me wrong. I mean, the rapture could come tonight. I have no idea. All right, Hallelujah. I do know Jesus said, we're looking, uh, you know, when I say Jesus said, it's actually Paul saying that I think the whole word of God is written by Jesus in a certain way. And there's scripture, scripture for that. I won't go into all of that right now. Right. But it says we're looking uh, for that blessed God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So many people are trying to, who's the Antichrist? I don't care. I want the next person to know Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 Because we know what withholding will let until He be taken out of the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm looking for Jesus. Yeah. I'm looking for the author and the finisher of my faith. Yeah. And until He comes, Either for us as a body corporately, when I say us, I'm just talking about me, like all born again believers all around the world, yeah. until he becomes, and for us corporately as a body, or he comes for me individually. I'm just looking for, see somebody born again of water and spirit. Man. I want somebody saved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you, if you get healed and you don't get saved, it's all for naught. Because oh, yeah. you've got a temporary alleviation of your pain that is going to be worse than you can imagine throughout all eternity. And I'll tell you this, if you don't get healed but you get saved, you still got the greatest thing in all the universe. God is an amazing, amazing God. And uh, I just want you to prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. I want God to heal everybody. I'd love to see healing break out in this place yeah. that would blow our minds. Hallelujah. That when you laid hands on the sick, you'd be calling, you'd be texting, Pastor, they got healed. Yeah. They, the sick were healed. Miracles happened. Church, that's what God is desiring to do in this Amen. end time hour. Yeah. Hallelujah. We can do all the door knocking. I believe in door knocking. We can do all the card passing out. And I believe in that. We can do all the visitation. I believe in that. But friend, what accentuates it and multiplies it all 
is when healing starts going for us. Hallelujah. In a greater measure than it's already been going for. Hallelujah. You believe God can do anything? Yes. You believe God can do anything. But faith. Hallelujah. Why don't we stand to our feet? Hallelujah. Why don't just at first, we may do something else after this. Why don't you pray for the person next to you? Ask God to bless them really good. And if they've got any sicknesses in their body that they need healing of, that God would heal their sickness. Let's everybody talk to Jesus together. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, do a miracle in every sick body in the name of Jesus. God, heal that hip in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, whatever we've got need of, do these miracles of healing. Do these miracles of healing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do these miracles of healing. God, hallelujah, 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 in Jesus' mighty name. God, if anybody needs healing in their spirit, God, I'm asking you to do that. Hallelujah. You always cause us the triumph in you, Jesus. You who give us the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You said all things are ours, whether life or death or things present or things to come. God, I glorify you. Loose healing, loose gifts of healing. Maybe somebody here, the Bible says, come and earnestly the best gifts. Yet I showed you a more excellent way. Of course we should have love. But maybe somebody here would say, man, I'd love to have the gifts of healing in my life. Hey, you're gonna, your flesh is really going to have to be crucified because God's not going to share his glory with you. Hallelujah. But maybe you want the gifts of healing. Why don't you reach out and say, God, you said Kevin Ernest are the best gifts. I want the gifts of healing in my life. God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. 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 I believe all nine gifts of the Spirit are still in the church today. God, raise up people with gifts of healing in their church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise up people with gifts of healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That they would be humble people, lowly people, meek people. Hallelujah. That would just go pray for people. That they would be healed and people would know it. But we would always give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration and all the praise. Hallelujah. 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 If you've got a headache, I know this is pollen season and several have had headaches right now. Why don't you just raise your hands to Jesus and say, God, by your stripes I was healed. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. One of those stripes was for my headache. Hallelujah. Why don't we ask God to deliver you from a headache? In Jesus' mighty name. God, I glorify you. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If the shadow of Peter passing by could see people healed, if pieces of garment could go forth from the Apostle Paul and see people healed and demons cast out, hallelujah, people coming and touching the hill of Jesus' garment. Hallelujah. I believe He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their distresses. Hallelujah. 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 I just saw somebody step out and did the perfect will of God and went and prayed for somebody that needed a miracle in their life. I'm going to ask you right now, some of you, you're feeling you need to step out, go pray for somebody. Go do that. And why don't you receive that prayer in the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Maybe some of you want to come forward right now. Have the elders of the church pray for you. Hallelujah. Some others can come up and pray with you as well. Hallelujah. Why don't you come? Let's see this house turn into a house of healing. Let it be a Bethesda, hallelujah, a pool and a place of healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I feel like somebody's troubled mind right here today. The Bible says that God came to give you the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah, the Lord just brought that to my mind. Somebody's under attack in your mind. God can heal your mind today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If he can take a demoniac with 5,000 devils and he can be clothed and in his right mind, the same Jesus is here today. The same Jesus is here today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Do these miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah. 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 The same Jesus is here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just reach out to the Lord. Let's spend a little time in prayer. Don't let your stomach growl and in the fact that lunch is almost done. Hallelujah. This is a move of the Holy Ghost. And this is the most important thing in the world. Glory to the name of Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. God, let there be tremendous testimonies of miracles of healing in this house today. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 God is Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our children, our youth need to know Jesus is where the power is. The house of God is where healing is. It's not on some uh, special effects, on some movie. It's not something they can see that blows their mind. It's not some dance move they can get that gets their, their little bodies moving in a certain way. That it is the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Church, I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to just advertise healing services at the church. I wish we could get a tent out front. Just have good old-fashioned tent revival. Hallelujah. Believe God to heal rheumatoid arthritis, liver disease, spleen disease, hallelujah, stomach disease. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, canes to be taken away. Wheelchairs have been taken away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. We're serving a mighty God. He's still the King forevermore. Healing, help, power, love. Hallelujah. God in the name of Jesus. God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel like somebody or a few somebody's, you've got somebody else in your mind. You're praying for them. Hallelujah. We're agreeing together with you. They're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And while you're praying,